Blog Talk Radio. And here we go. All right, welcome to that nerd show. We're back for uh, another week. Sorry we weren't around last night, but hey, we have a great show for you today. It is the what is the most pro America action movie? Okay, so you got a lot to choose from that we'll be discussing. But I'm one of your hosts, Marcus Blake, and with me as always is Brendan. What's going on, nerds? And, of course, the lovely Tatchet. Hello. <laughs> so we do have uh, some interesting news uh, for you. Uh, there's probably more gaming news tonight than anything else, some actually really big news. Uh, but um, just a couple little quick things before we get to gaming news, and then we'll hand it over to Brendan. Um, excuse me, in case you, uh, yes, I am drinking beer and I'm belching. Just live with it. <laughs> anyway, in case you have not heard, Game of Thrones was renewed for a season four on HBO, as if there was any doubt. <laughs> but we figured we Shocking. should, yeah, we should, we, we, we wanted to at least tell you anyway. The only question um, on that is whether or not Martin will finish the books before they get to the point where he's at now. Big question. Hey, I'm okay with him doing a little less touring on a, uh, on book tours and uh, stuff to get done with everything. So, or HBO is just going to have to start making up shit. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, also last week uh, we did report that um, Robert Redford was going to be in Captain America: The Winter Soldier as a Shield agent. Well, now it's been reported that he will be the head of Shield. Uh, we don't know his character's name, but. He will be the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, the, the rumors are still flying about whether he'll do a cameo in television or in the television sheer, series or just be in the movies. Uh, which, by the way, I think he should actually do uh, a cameo in the television series, considering he ha- actually hasn't done a TV show in 50 years. And, uh, and I mean, come on. Uh, you got to give Clark Gregg some props, too. Um, the guy who they're bringing back is Agent Colson, who's going to be in the series. You know, I grant that it's not going to have superheroes week in and week out on there. It's going to be about the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But, you know, give Clark Gregg some love. Put on Robert Redford every once in a while. Put on Nick Fury every once in a while. Exactly. You know, put Why Sam not? Jackson in there. You know, give him some love. You know, you, Robert, you've already established you're great between being a director and a philanthropist and a film festival and an actor. There's no shame in going back and doing a few guest spots on a TV show. I mean, I'm seriously. when it's part of a larger universe like that. Exactly. I mean, you're definitely getting your nerd on. As if we didn't like you already, now we really, really like you. Even if you have to do movies with Shia LaBeouf, like the movie that's coming up in the next couple of weeks that we will be seeing. But, you know, yeah, but that's hey. not his fault. That's producer's fault. That's, you know, it's, it's, you know. No, it is. It is actually his fault. He was the director of the film. <laughs> oh, Robert, Robert, Robert. <laughs> you poor man, you. Well, no, no. You realize I'm, I'm, he's just a pretty face and not talent. This is my theory. I think Robert Redford's like, you know what? I'm going to show him what it really means to act. I'm going to get the all-star cast of Hollywood. So if he really does suck up the film, we'll be able to take over, and maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll teach the young pup a thing or two. I got something better. He made a drunken bet saying I can make a good movie even with Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Wait, was he at the same drunken bet that Peter Berg and Liam Neeson yes, had about yes, how to out? conversation. <laughs> how to out Michael Bay, Michael Bay. Same conversation. They were all there. They were getting bl- blasted on scotch. They came up with the craziest <laughs> bets they could come up with, and that was Robert Redford. i got to come up with a good movie. And that's why it took so long, because that bet was like, what, four or five years ago? So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, it took him a while to come up with a script. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> so, um, Anyway... Other than that, we'll, we're going to be saving some of our uh, end of the TV uh, series season finale reviews for next week, including The Walking Dead and uh, things like that. So, other than that, that's really what's going on in the world of movies and TV. Uh, except one little thing, uh, of course, you should be done watching the first episode of Hannibal, and um, we'll give you a review on it next week, uh, Wednesday. And one final thing before I hand over to gaming news. As a as somebody who came from Chicago, 
I do have to give a shout out to this. A uh, very sad thing happened to die uh, today. Uh, Roger Ebert, the longtime movie reviewer who had worked at the Chicago Sun Times for 40 years, finally uh, passed away uh, today. And as most of you have known, I mean, well, first of all, if you're above the age of 30, you pretty much know Cecil and Ebert when it came to yeah. movie reviews. And uh, Roger Ebert, while I did not always agree with him on his reviews, uh, was pretty darn good at it. And he will thoroughly be missed. So. But it's okay because we still have Waldorf and Stadler. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, and other than that, I'm going to turn it over to you for gaming news. <laughs> okay. Um, first, the biggest news of the week. Disney has shut down LucasArts, so there will be no more first-party Star Wars games from LucasArts. Now, on first glance, everybody, oh, my God, this is terrible news. But I'm here to tell you, slow down, take a breath, relax. It's actually fantastic news. Because everybody thinks that, oh, there's LucasArts, there'll be no more good Star Wars games. They're just going to license it out to every greedy company. It's going to be a bunch of crap. Well, let's go back a little bit of ways, shall we? Knights of the Old Republic. Remember those games? Yeah, great games, right? Made by LucasArts? Nope. Bioware and Obsidian. The Rogue Squadron series. Great games, right? Made by LucasArts? Nope. Not again. That, were made, that was made by Factor 5 Studios. The Jedi Knight, Jedi, Dark Forces Jedi Knight, and then later Jedi Academy games. Great games, right? Made by LucasArts? Wrong again. Made by Raven Softworks. The, uh, the Battlefront series. Awesome games. Everybody loves Battlefront 1 or 2. People have been clamoring for Battlefront 3 for years. Made by LucasArts, right? Uh, no, 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 that wasn't either. No, that was made by Pandemic, which is now defunct. Uh, by Battlefront 3, which was canceled, was made by uh, another group called Free Radical, which was then bought out by Crytek. Crytek does the Crisis series, and they still own the rights to the engine for Battlefront 3. So now Battlefront 3 actually might get made, which should make all Star Wars gamers rejoice. So, to review, LucasArts hasn't put out a damn good game in frickin' 20 years. The last thing they did was Monkey Island, okay? That was the last good game they made. The last Star Wars games they made, The Force Unleashed and Force Unleashed 2, they charged you 60 bucks for a game that was four hours long, and the writing was so bad you almost thought George Lucas wrote it himself. Okay? So <laughs> rejoice. They're going back to licensing. They're going back to the model that brought you all of your favorite Star Wars games. Now, moving on. From that, uh, anybody else have any fond memories of the game, the, the series Thief? Well, if you do, then rejoice, because Thief is coming back to... Uh, next-gen console starting in 2014. It, the cinematic trailer looks amazing. It's up on our Facebook feed. Uh, give it a look. There's also a review at IGN, which we've linked to. So give that a check out. That, that looks really awesome. Um, and finally, one last note is uh, there is a new MMO coming out. It's a Dungeons & Dragons MMO called Neverwinter, and it looks a hell of a lot better than I was giving it credit for early on in production. And it is actually entering open beta on April 30th. If you would like early access, there are two packages you can buy, two collector's editions. Uh, one is called the Hero of the North Founders Edition, which is ridiculously priced at $199. Um, you get a whole bunch of goodies with it, but I really don't think it worth, it's worth it. Uh, unless you're a complete Drist Jordan fanboy, and if you've read any of Ari Salvatore's books, you know who I'm talking about. Because if you buy that, you essentially get to be Drist Ord. Um, you get to play a drow, a good drow. You get to have a armored spider mount, and you get to have a celestial panther pet. Great. Now we're going to have 400 Drist Ordens running around the server. Awesome. Um, but, uh, but seriously, I, I wish they made that cost a thousand dollars so only like five people would buy it. Um the more reasonably priced version is fifty nine ninety nine, which includes an armor includes, excuse me, an armored horse mount and a dire wolf companion, and three days early access to the beta. Uh that's the one I'm gonna do. Uh it is a free to play game after that, and there is um the nifty thing is normally beta characters are wiped after April twenty fifth, leading into the open beta there will be no more character wipes. So if you got, if you buy it, you get into the early beta, and then you play throughout open beta when the game officially launches, you get to keep your character. So that's very cool. Um, 
And that pretty much is the uh, gaming news for the week, although on one side note, um, some of you guys know my gaming community, Legion of Myth. We've actually merged with the Battletech community. It's now called the Compelling, Compelling Confederation. You can find it at compellingconfederation.com. If you want to join a Neverwinter Guild, we are actually working on putting one together. I will be the guild leader. You can message me on Facebook or find me on the website. Uh, my forum handle is Xavier. So there you go. All right. Man, it does, there was a lot that actually happened in the gaming world this week. <laughs> Yeah, I'd actually like to, I'd actually like to uh, give a quick shout-out to the guys at the, the new guild because apparently when we all merged, uh, our guild leader was telling them about me and they didn't know who I was, and then they said, oh, but he's Brendan from that nerd show. And they went, oh, really? So <laughs> apparently they know us and they listen to us, so we'll give a big shout-out to them. That's right. We do like to recognize our fans on this show. So, um, Tatchet, did you have any uh, news for this week? Other than that, this one is really good. Nope, not this week. <laughs> nice. Other than what was really good, Tasha, I'm sorry. My wine, this wine that I have. <laughs> oh, okay. She's drinking wine and enjoying Spartacus. She's getting all caught up yes. so we could do our season, you know, finale next Wednesday after the season finally uh, completely ends on Friday or tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow is Friday. Yeah, you know, I've yeah, been drinking. It is, yes. <laughs> All right, one quick thing that we got to do, and then we're going to turn it over to our main show. Um, Tatchet and I did go see a movie called The Sapphires uh, on Monday, and we do talk about music movies um, and musicals on this show because we're nerdy, and because we, uh, you know, we all have similar tastes in music. We all love old school stuff and and everything, um, and we definitely all love the BBC and British actors. So I have to recommend this movie to people, and I would definitely give it uh, four and a half stars out of five. And the only reason I'm so excited about it is, one, I loved all the music because this is all Motown, R&B, you know, soul, you know, from the late 60s and everything. And it thus, and it being based on a true story about a British promoter or Australian uh, played by a British actor who manages a – uh, Aboriginal girls uh, singing group and sends them into Vietnam, you know, or they go into Vietnam and perform. It's, you know, uh, was unheard of at that time because while we had civil rights in America and we were starting to come out of all that, Australia pretty much still acknowledged that Aboriginal uh, people were less than dogs. So, um Anyway, it was a very, very funny movie. Chris Dowd, if you don't know who that is, uh, nerds, uh, I would tell you to my Netflix recommendation to you is The IT Crowd. And he's also been in a um, bunch of other different uh, movies here and there. Uh, but The IT Crowd, is, I think, is the one that he is, uh, uh, you know, recognized for. And, of course, he was in Pirate Radio. But uh, it was definitely a very funny movie. And I, I think Tatchett can pretty much tell you that I didn't stop laughing throughout the entire film. And that's no, my review it was, on it. It was what good you... acting, though. Yeah, the <laughs> jokes were great. I didn't expect I... it for a PG-13 movie for half that to, you know, actually right. come out of their mouths without any spoilers. But yeah, it was it was worth it. I really enjoyed it. Well, this movie I've been saying it before. You know, we went and saw it. This movie reminded me a lot of the commitment of or the, you know, the same movie, The Commitments. Uh, you know, for those of you that know the uh, the Irish guy that puts together a soul band in uh, in Dublin, you know they're the hardest working soul I'm band in pro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it kind of had that same vibe to it. Um, and again, I mean, the soundtrack was really incredible. So um, it was actually released in Australia last year, but it is just now making its way to the U.S. And I would recommend to our fans. If you love music, if you love British actors and, uh, you know, really love to put all that to a good comedy, especially if it's based on a true story, then go see uh, this movie. So, anyway, that's our review. Okay. All right, I guess my microphone was uh, getting screwed up there. Can everybody hear me in Radio Land? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Can you, hear you? <laughs> you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Hear no, you this is... Oh, okay. <laughs> you are okay. 
Okay. Well, apparently I couldn't hear myself. So, oh. was, yeah, um, this is not a Verizon commercial. <laughs> so, anyway, all right. Good to go. Now, since we did a quick review on the movie Olympus Has Fallen uh, a couple weeks ago, I thought it was uh, – or did we do it last week? No, we did it last week. I, I'm – my weeks are running together. I apologize, audience. But we thought it'd be really fun to talk about the most pro-American action movie of all time, okay? And compile our list because it seems like there's a lot of action movies over the last uh, thirty, forty, you know, fifty years that have, you know, like I said, been very pro-America and that everybody else is bad. And sometimes it's a really good film, and sometimes it's a little over the top and. Sometimes people do movies to parody that attitude. Um, Team America World Police is a good example. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So we just thought it would be really funny to, to kind of talk about that as a theme and put together a list of our favorite movies. Um, and if nothing else, if you're kind of clueless, uh, I think this just sums up exactly what we're going to be talking about tonight. America! Fuck yeah! That's right. So good, I played it three times. Uh, I I got a great one for you. Start us off. uh, Because it wasn't even, it was was a completely horrible movie, but I think any pro-USA movie list has to start and end with Chuck Norris, and I'm going to throw out Invasion USA. Oh, no. <laughs> God. I mean, you had Richard Lynch, who was an Irish guy, who must have played a Soviet bad guy in like 40 films. I don't know what about him made people think he looked Russian, but then he was a Russian in everything. Um, and he just he's like in 60 when he's filming that movie, and he's going up against Chuck Norris, who's in jeans and a denim shirt with cut off sleeves and he's firing two Uzis at the same time and it doesn't even look like he's aiming at anybody but people are just falling down it, 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 it's, it's hysterical it's awesome well I agree I mean, <laughs> and no we're not going to make this an entire show about Chuck Norris facts although we no. 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 no 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 balance chat no no although, crap Baron's chat, please. <laughs> although it is rumored yep. that Chuck Norris once killed 20 men just by saying bang. Mm-hmm. And that is very pro-America. <laughs> hey, but John, John Root uh, did that in, uh, what was that movie with John Belushi? Uh, oh, God. I forget the spy movie. <laughs> he looks at a guy and goes bang, and the guy just st- startles and walks backward and gets impaled on a tree limb. <laughs> Well, you know, like I said, getting back to Olympus Has Fallen, it was a very good action movie. But it was also like, it doesn't matter who the terrorists are. We will kick their butts no matter what. No matter how implausible it is that somebody can take over the White House. Yeah. And there will always be one man who loves America so much that he will kill everybody. And for this movie, he just happens to be played by a Scotsman. Well, you know, I think if, if there's a real guy that they should they should make a pro uh, a pro America movie about, it should be uh, General Mad Dog Mattis of the U.S. Marine Corps. Um, basically, he walked into a room with a bunch of Afghan commanders at the very beginning of the war, and said, "I come in peace. I didn't bring artillery, and I'm here to plead with you with tears in my eyes. Do not fuck with me." Or so help me God, I will kill every last one of you. (laughs) (laughs) This is not a joke. He actually said this. (laughs) And and that is American diplomacy. Like his his personal model is be polite, be professional, but have a plan to kill everyone you meet. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that gets me back to like one of my favorite movies. Um, 
you know, Clint Eastwood has done a lot of great films, and he's directed a lot of great films. But one of the ones that he directed and starred in, Heartbreak Ridge. Mm. It is a fantastic yeah. movie. And here's the thing. I actually, one of my drill sergeants in uh, in the Army, actually my platoon sergeant at basic training, was so much like Gunny Highway that you were literally afraid of him. And then you look yeah. at this man like, you know what, they should keep you in a glass case and only, you know, take you out in case of emergency. <laughs> And if you've not seen Heartbreak Ridge and you've never met a Marine Corps gunnery sergeant, let me just explain it to you in one quote. Be advised, I'm mean, nasty, and tired. I eat concertina wire and piss napalm, and I can put a round in a fleas ass at 200 meters. So why don't you go hump somebody else's leg before I push yours in? <laughs> if you've never seen the movie or met any Marine Corps drill instructor, now you kind of have an idea. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I mean, that's what they should be. That's the kind of man that, you know, makes you a better soldier. No, you don't really want to hang out with them in your personal life, and you certainly don't want this guy giving you advice on, well, anything that's not related to the military. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, he's definitely, definitely the guy you want training you. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Um. Anyway, so Patrick, what's yeah. your favorite pro USA movie? Well, I have a few, but they're they're not all necessarily dealing with saving the U.S. Um, but one of them is kind of saving, kind of like a the a pimp a, a pimp yeah a, a apocalypse movie. Um, Escape from New York. I found very nice. Cool yeah, because he's going in saving the president and his cheesy really lines and. I don't know. I just thought it was it was very American. I mean, it's, plus it was done in the eighties, about eighty seven or is it eighty seven? No, earlier than that. It's like, ear, it's, it's like early eighties. Oh, okay, early eighties. Yeah, yeah, that movie's so I, like I thirty Kirk, years old now. Yeah, Kirk Ru- Russell did a really good job at kind of just being a representative of being an American style, you know, patriotic kind of movie. Um, right. Also, the second one I think I would throw in is Rocky. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, Especially Rocky not, Three. <laughs> no, no. There you go. Rocky Four. You're thinking of Rocky, Rocky Four. Oh, it's four, four. I'm sorry. Yeah, Four. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. With Ivan for Drago. Rocky, I must for break Rocky. you. That's right. Where he single-handedly destroys Russia in the Cold War. <laughs> That's right. There you go. And you know, he was on a he was on a anti-Russia kick there. He was on a big you know kill the commies kick because he also did Rambo Three, which was about yep. you know. It, and I love looking back on it 30 years later, looking back on the dedication at the end of Rambo 3 to the brave men and women of the Mujahideen who fight off the, yeah, not so much anymore, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, that just well at the insane. time it was relevant. <laughs> yeah, at the time it was relevant. Now it's just like, yeah, not so much. Well, that throws into the main ones as Expendables 1 and 2. Right. Yeah. That's fitting. Because well, it has everybody. You know and has your favorite Chuck Norris in it. And he was Well, the second one great. was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? That that really was just, you know what? We're all over the hill, you know, aging action stars. So let's put us all in a movie and let let the old guys kick everybody's butt. And That's did. really what those movies are about. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I just want to point out that I am okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, since it's actually, uh, they're trying to make a sequel, we we definitely have to talk about one of the greatest, this is in my top five, Independence Day. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Phil Pullman speech. <laughs> Do not go softly into that good night. Like, really, you're quoting Shakespeare in this movie? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, it was kind of cheesy. I will admit, but China? it what? <laughs> it's not like it's not a fun film. It's not like you're not going to watch it again. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> of course we are, missing, we are. Uh, 
are we are missing a a, a uh, '80s movie that just got remade. That the remake was awful. Red Dawn. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but I mean, I, the original I, '80s is classic. Yes. Well, and here's the thing too. I mean, we did. You know, I, I tore into this movie last year when we had to, you know, go see it and blah blah blah. But uh, again, you know, the sequel getting to that implausible scenario that uh, the North Koreans could actually amount to anything and take over parts of America. At least the Russians knew that they might be able to do it with the Cubans. <laughs> Which yeah. Is, you know, it's, it's a better storyline. Uh, but I think what made the original so fun is, you know, the tensions of the Cold War. And the fact that, you know, again, we are not going to let freedom die. Okay, and no matter what, we will not give in to communism. But there are some very emotional points in there where they actually killed their friend who swallowed a tracker because his father, the mayor, gave it to him. And, you know, the colonel at the end of the movie allows, um, you know, Patrick Swayze's character to carry off his dead brother's body somewhere and let them die together um, when they knew they were kind of defeated. And at the same time, Powers Booth was a great older character, you know. Yeah, just playing the lieutenant the colonel. Yeah, if you're so good, how come you got shot down? Well, there was five of them on me, and I got four of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, no, I mean. You know, the 80s is a tre- treasure trove of those movies, though. Um, another one, Iron Eagle. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God, I loved Iron Eagle growing up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> And you know what? And it had one of the greatest soundtracks ever. Oh, it really did. I mean, it had you know, Queen and a few other guys, a few other awesome songs. But, yeah, it was really yeah. good. Well, because you um, had this mixture of, like, 80s rock music to it. You know, he's going to put his little tape then, recorder and play the rock right. music. It helps him fly better. And Chappie, the older guy, when he's putting together the plan, you know, puts it on he's the He's got the classic box. rock and the soul yeah. and, yeah, you know, Motown <laughs> stuff going on. and Exactly. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I just love it. It's like so, like and it's, it was like blowing up Iraq before, like five years before we were going to blow up Iraq. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was just great. It was absolute greatness. You had this teenage kid using an F sixteen to save his dad. I mean, come on, that's right. Horrible story writing, but absolute greatness on film. <laughs> well, I also want to point out too that if you're a teenage kid and you work with a Air Force colonel, then steal a couple of F sixteens. Um, no, they don't really throw a parade for you when you come back. Yeah, you might have rescued your dad, but you certainly don't get to go to the Air Force Academy like you did at the end of the film. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, there, there is kind of a camp or an academy that you do get to go to. It just has lots of iron bars. Yes. Boy, it's a, it's, 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 first name is Fort. Its last name is Leavenworth. Uh, <laughs> no. I, all right, but here's my question about, like, very pro-American movies. Does it seem like that we can get behind more of the, you know, attitude that we're fighting for, like, a good cause, that, you know, it isn't such a political thing, even with these cheesy movies, compared to kind of the crap that comes out now? Um, um, well, you know, I think it was part of it is a different time. Um, you know, now everything's so convoluted. I mean, you know the political landscape is so crazy where this country's so divided right now and on top of that you know there's no one country we can look at and say that's the enemy and that's what right. we can focus our fears and aggression on because i mean who's our enemy now or al qaeda yeah i guess but that's not a country it's a loose conglomeration of a bunch of assholes with nothing better else to do um right. it, it you've got I mean, China, kind of, but that's more of an economic struggle than it is a, a military struggle, much more so than it ever was an issue with the Soviet Union. Um, North Korea, I'm sorry. Kim Jong-un, uh, he, all he's doing is manufacturing a crisis so he can look good at home. And if he does go too far and gets himself blown up, well, I hate to break it to him, but China ain't going to help. And they're going to be like, oh, really? Oh, so sad. Now we don't have to worry about those crazy bastards. Um <laughs> 
you know, so there's like, there's no like clear cut bad guy anymore, and we've kind of turned on ourselves because of it, and so we're always at each other's throats in this country, and so there's really like no one style of movie that strikes a chord with the country anymore. Um, you know, you could do these movies before because we all had this common enemy and this common um, focus of our fears. And now we're all kind of, you know, distrustful of each other in this country and distrustful of our own government, not that they haven't made it real easy on us to do so. But, well, um, but here's the other thing, too. I mean, our storytelling is getting a little bit more complex, okay? We take the uh, the show on FX, The Americans, you know, showing the other perspective, yeah. and, and it's a brilliantly written show. But at the same time, you know, you get – you can't quite look at America in the same way as you did with 80s action movies that we are the greatest nation, that, you know, we are absolutely perfect. We have villains here and ruthless people that do bad things. And, yeah, and you know, but they they get, we're not the greatest nation anymore because we've let our education system go to crap. So, you know, we just don't educate our children anymore. We we herd chickens. We babysit them. So Right. Well, and here's another uh, thing, too. I mean, who who the one actor that's probably the most pro American actor that really symbolizes America? Who do you think that would be? I'm going to go with Tatchet because I, I know you know the answer. I'll be back. No. <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> You'll be back. You're taking a break. I'll to go be look back. Up, <laughs> let's go look up the irony, answer. Considering he's he's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, dude. He, no, he's definitely one of the ones. I would pick. Well, no, I mean, I think he's one of them. But, I mean, there's one actor that really symbolized, uh, you know, America, even today. Okay? I mean, especially the 20th century. And who is that man? Brendan. I don't know where you're going with this, to be honest. Almost made a bad joke. Almost mentioned Tatum. But, you know. Am I, am I, are we having too much of an intellectual conversation here that everybody's completely lost by what I'm saying? No, I just don't know where you're going with it. John (laughs) Wayne. John oh, Wayne. Okay. Well, How is right. that not well, an audience? I'm th- because I'm thinking a modern day actor, not somebody from yeah. 50 years ago. We haven't really discussed anything from back then. So yeah, but people still why. quote John Wayne. I mean, he. Well, sure, but I but our discussion hadn't gone anywhere, so near there, so you pulled it out of left field on me. I still think you guys are just drunk and not paying attention. That's I'm, my story. I'm not I'm drunk thinking. yet. I'm working on it, but I'm not yeah, drunk I yet. Know. I only had one. Damn it! Oh, all right, exactly. all right. But well, um, well, yeah, I mean, if you look at, well, yeah, I mean, if you look at John Wayne's resume outside of his westerns, hell, it might as well be the resume for a propaganda, you know, propaganda filmmaker for the Department of Defense. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. They were expendable in harm's way. Uh, you know, I mean, runs oh, not runs out, run deep, but Osh Operation Pacific. Uh, you know, and I only know the Navy ones. I'm sure there's a dozen army ones too to go along well, with that. You know. And here's the thing about John Wayne. I mean, I, I, if this is not propaganda more than anything else, he made over 200 films in his career, and he was only allowed to die in a handful of them. He only was allowed to die in seven films, okay? Yeah. And, you know, between those films, they were either westerns or war movies, nothing else, which, again, that's pretty much what he did. But one of the movies, Sands of Iwo Jima, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's – I'm not trying to say that it's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, we still make propaganda films. That's the point of making, you know, the all – you know, the the most pro-American film that's out there that the other side's going to be pissed off at. Argo being a good example of, well, you know, we're going to show our point of view of having to rescue our terrorists. And, and what does Iran want to do? Well, we're going to make our own – film of those events and show the other perspective. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, you know, they had a different cut of uh, of Olympus has fallen for Asia, and I'm thinking, yeah, they recut it to the terrorists win in North Korea. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think they saw our version, of it because that's why they want to go to war now. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> They're like, how dare us? One of our comrades had, has fallen in the you White challenge House. challenge us? <laughs> Well, this is a fictional it. movie. <laughs> so, I, saw right, a great, gotta, I saw a great. Go, go ahead. Well, we need to take a quick uh, break, real quick, um, and then we'll come back. Uh, 
we do have a couple of little quick announcements. Got to find it here. Uh, just to remind you people what's going on. So we'll be right back. If you got to go to the restroom, go to the restroom. If not, stick around. Hey, Star Trek fans. That Nerd Show has a great event that we want you to be a part of. Fathom Events presents Star Trek The Next Generation, the best of both worlds, parts one and two, special event on Thursday, April 25th in theaters nationwide. It's gloriously remastered as a feature-length movie with a look behind the scenes. If you love Star Trek The Next Generation, then you will want to see it in the movie theater. Join the cast of that nerd show on April 25th at AMC Theaters in the North Park Mall in Dallas for this big event. We will be doing trivia with the audience and giving away big prizes. You just might win a season of The Next Generation on Blu-ray. Join us, because resistance is futile. All right, we just wanted to give you all a quick reminder of something that's coming up where you get to come hang out with us if you're in Dallas. But anyway, back to our uh, original discussion. And what were you saying, Brendan? Oh, I don't know. I lost it at that point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's true, America, uh, right there. Uh, I, I went, uh, I went. hey, never mind, and you started playing a commercial, and I went, beer, <laughs> beer, 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 <laughs> beer. <laughs> Uh, right now, also, I'm drinking the uh, Total Disorder Porter from Humperdinks. If you get a chance, go grab one of their growlers on Thursdays. It's only six bucks to fill your growler. There you go. And <clears> you know what? I think we should get a free beer by Humperdinks, considering we just gave them a free ad. I will run that by them. Um, while we haven't really thrown documentaries in this discussion, I think if there's a very pro-American documentary that's non-political, sort of, then it would have to be the one on the Discovery Channel. That is on Netflix, How Beer Saved the World. Because let's face it, America really did start uh, with, you know, a bunch of drunk guys complaining about their taxes that got their muskets and, you know, started the American Revolution. Oh, this sounds frighteningly present, doesn't it? it? (laughs) As we are coming upon tax day. Ugh. Or as we like to call it in certain circles, uh, tax slave day. But that's for, that's for another discussion. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for the all. I'm waiting for the pro America movie that says that you know we have to take out the IRS because that's where the terrorists are hiding. Yes. Wait. Yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. Hey, we should do that. We should, direct we should make that film. movie. It's I will thus, be the one that attacks. I'll go in and attack the IRS. I'm kidding, everybody. And now, the the FBI say, is, you know, now it's on the Internet. And now you know, <laughs> NSA has already recorded this. They've, put it, they've sent it yeah, off to an I, analyst. And they're I'm, already and being, down. I'm already being watched by the FBI, and I can get my own self into trouble. Thank you. The NSA Fine. No I was just agency. trying to catch up. <laughs> I think it's a great idea, though. I, yeah. We could get funding uh, for it. Now, going back to something you said earlier about Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, there is an irony there that he did make some of the very, you know, pro-America movies being from Austria. And (laughs) some of them I don't know know if it's an irony, really, though, because, I mean, he he kind of is the American dream, you know, come to Mm -hmm. this country with nothing, build yourself up, become rich. I mean, Kennedy, become the governor. (laughs) And the golden Yeah. He's done a lot. Yeah. I mean, he's done a lot. Well, I mean, most what? Americans do. I mean, he's come a long way from Hercules in New York. Let's just put that out there. Well, and look, he's pretty much invincible except for, you know, his kryptonite obviously is the household maid. Yeah. <laughs> That could happen to anybody. And now all of a sudden, I've got, I've just got this Family Guy reference going in my head with the little Mexican maid from Family Guy. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm terrible. Anyway, uh, well, it's shit we couldn't have said on the red carpet when he was walking down shaking everybody's hands. <laughs> Don't you? But considering we had that uh, rather attractive young Hispanic woman next to us, I'm almost surprised he didn't hit on her. (laughs) (laughs) We are bad. (laughs) Yes, I know. I'm terrible. Hey, Lent's over. We don't we don't have to struggle against temptation anymore. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. 
But no, I mean, think about the stuff that he did. Okay, Commando, one of the greatest action movies yes. from the 80s. Okay. Right. <laughs> and I think that if you're going to be a great pro-America action star, it comes down to not only how well you can kill people, but the great lines that you have. Mm. And who does who doesn't get better lines than Arnold? Yeah. Except maybe Stallone. I, I, I would give Stallone, yeah. But, you know, uh, Raw it's Deal. Raw Deal yeah, was another raw. good one. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I would I would say the Running Man. Sure, I think that's kind of pro America, pro America in the future. What was the line from that one? Um, he had to split. <laughs> <laughs> he, he cuts the dude in half. Where is also He had to split. <laughs> okay. But here's my favorite one, though. My favorite pro-America Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, True Lies. Oh, oh God, no. yeah. With, with Charlton Heston oh. as the head of the, the Omega yeah. Sector. I mean, oh, God. I mean, if you're going to have kind of a propaganda oh, film, why not that one? <laughs> oh, at least you didn't pick the Great movie. I love that movie. It was. And Tom Arnold was a great sidekick. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. No, but I think the best part too is, you know, when he starts yelling at the horse, what are you doing? You let him get away. What kind of cop are you? <laughs> you let the bike guy get away. Oh <laughs> uh, no, no, it you say what you want about James Cameron and he has made some shitty films, uh, Titanic being the best of them. <laughs> but the worst <laughs> thing in your point of view. Yeah. Um, True Lies was definitely definitely a great film. So, um, whether you can consider Terminator as like a pro America movie, considering it was the world that got destroyed, I don't know. But still, I, I, great action films. Um, even the third one that he came back for. So, I think it's that's its own category, like with Total Recall. Right. On their own category. Right. Because um, I mean, it, you know, it's Hollywood. We we want our version of how the world should be. So, uh, Bruce Willis, though, another, you know, great action star from the '80s. Uh, Die Hard is definitely a very pro-America movie. We're not going to let terrorists take over a Japanese corporation in America. Well, I don't know. I I think his most pro-America movie, and actually it's a little bit more, even though it is pro-America, it's a little bit more on the serious side, um, was from 2003, Tears of the Sun. Yeah, I was going to say that one. (laughs) Which is just an, actually, I mean, yeah, it's an action movie, but it's actually just a really good movie. It's, it's, you know, you could have inserted Special Forces team here. I mean, it could have been... You know, British SAS or you know German GSG nine or French Special Forces or anybody, but it was just about these guys who you know went against orders to save their own butts and returned to base to help these uh, refugees escape to a friendly country. Right. So, so it was um, particularly, you know, imagine um, the Trail of Tears with one group of one small group of soldiers protecting the Native Americans with an entire other group of soldiers three times as four five, five times as large trying to kill everybody. It basically is what you had. Right. Well, you know, and speaking of Bruce Willis, uh, when we were doing the best and worst of Bruce Willis uh, a couple months ago, this is one movie that I totally forgot that I never mentioned during the show, which is actually one of my favorites, The Last Boy Scout. Yeah, it's a great one. <laughs> it is. But, I mean, it also fits within the category of very pro-America. He's not going to let a senator, uh, while he's a Secret Service detainee, basically beat up a woman. He's going to step in and do that. You know, he got shot saving the president. Oh, and well, and there's the senator not... selling his vote to, to change laws. Right, exactly. He's just not going to let that happen, even though he's technically a scumbag. And what is he going to do? You know, he's going to find a down on his luck, one of America's greatest quarterbacks in Damon Wayans, and they're going to save the day. <laughs> you no, know, I mean, touch me again, and I'll kill you. 
<laughs> that was the greatest scene. It's it's listed like uh, IGN did a list of like the hundred greatest movie punches, and it came in I think at number seven. Yeah. So I mean, you know, this guy is an American hero. He really is. Um, mm-hmm. Even though he's a you know private detective bum now, um, but I really I think that would be an interesting movie to uh, have done a sequel to. You know, to see them actually. Well, in and, and here, you know, you like the buddy cop type movies. I'm not saying Rush Hour doesn't have its moments, okay? But Chris Tucker really is just a loud mouth, and he gets annoying at times. But Damon oh, Wayne was actually... Jackie, yeah, I think it's Jackie Chan that makes those movies with, when it's towards Rush Hour. Right, no, I agree. But here's the thing. Damon Wayans was actually really good in The Last Boy Scout. He was not that annoying, even though he had to be kind of the punk, okay? Right. What would Joe do right now? He'd shoot everybody and smoke some cigarettes. I don't have any cigarettes. I can't do that. <laughs> um, you know, now that we have a fifth Die Hard movie that just came out, and while it was not great or anything, I mean, I, I got to thinking about this theme show after that movie, too. You know, it's like we have the most American badass it goes over to Russia and pretty much just destroys the place. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, he's going to save Russia for American democracy, our version of it, and get a son back, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you um, – so here's my kind of my serious question to both of you. Do you think that we should make propaganda films – in Hollywood, I mean, do they do they still have their place? We'll start with you, Tatchett. No, not the way everything's complicated now. Unless we can actually make a good comedy out of it, otherwise, it's gonna piss a lot of people off. Yeah. We already have a lot of people pissed off at us already. So. <laughs> no, that's true. Good idea. Let's I agree. Comedy. We do need a good comedy. You yeah. know, like it, like this. America, fuck yeah! Yes, that is a good movie. <laughs> I own it. Yeah, it's it's on Netflix. I was I actually watched it today before this show because I hadn't seen it in a while. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> now here's the funny part too. I mean, go back and watch that film. How true is it for the actors that were like, stop talking politics. You're a good actor, but shut up. Sean Penn. Oh, <laughs> Alec Baldwin. <Yeah. laughs> uh, they're part of the the fag group. <laughs> and if we are going to talk about South Park, we do have to talk about South Park the movie. Blame Canada. Uh, I think the best part was still when he was down in hell with uh, Saddam was down in hell with the devil. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Was... Okay. Now I know Sorry, Brendan's gonna. I know Brendan's gonna hate me saying this part, but <laughs> this movie was actually very good. Great kind of parody. One of John Candy's last Canadian bacon. That was pretty. Yeah, I don't funny. hate you for saying it. No, you're oh, going to hate this part. You know who it was written by? Yeah, Michael Moore. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just because a guy annoys the blue and the Jesus out of me doesn't mean I'm going to hate you for talking about one of his movies. Okay, just making sure. You know, I mean, you know, we're not talking about Michael Moore documentaries or anything, which I think are just, you know, glorified mockumentaries that still entertain me, but, you know, they are what they are. are you but kidding me? I'm, going to, I'm going to Cuba to get my health care. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, Canadian bacon <laughs> really was this great little parody. You know, they're trying to bribe the Russians and starting up the Cold War, <laughs> and, and they literally invade Canada. I want my honey back. Yeah. Now, if anybody wanted to invade Canada, it wouldn't all be all that hard. I mean, they only have about, what, 25 million residents? Yeah. You just go there. They probably have more moose than they do residents, so, you know. 
I mean, it's a beautiful country, though. It's gorgeous up there. I mean, it's a bit cold for my taste, but, you know. I could, definitely, I could definitely handle living there because I'm a hockey fan, but, uh, you know. Like I, I could said, handle vacationing. I couldn't handle winter. I don't know. New England was as close as I want to ever get to Canada in wintertime. <laughs> There's a move, and I move, there's a reason I moved to Texas, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's go back a little bit. Besides uh, John Wayne films and stuff, um, uh, what, probably one of the most pro-American. Um, um, actually, I have two very pro-American war movies that I want to throw in there, and one of them does make me cry. It's called The Dirty Dozen. <laughs> Here's one for you. Or go ahead, you said you had two. But yeah, the dirty dozen. <laughs> well, come on. Who doesn't like Lee Marvin and his ragtag prison when Jim Brown falls in that grenade and dies? Yeah. Lee Marvin and Charles Bronson, I believe, yeah. 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 <laughs> like everybody dies. But no, I mean, that's a great movie. It, it was well, like the original Expendables. Yes. <laughs> uh, the other one. Uh, and I'm going to borrow a line um, talking about the ultimate cool guy from the Tower of Steve, Steve McQueen, and the Great Escape. Yeah. Well, I got a I got a good old one for you too, with old blue eyes, Sinatra, Von Ryan's Express. There you go. There That's you go. an awesome one. It is. You know the difference between, uh, and I think a big difference between um, the propaganda style movies of yesteryear and things of today is you look at who is in those movies and, and they could actually act. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you whisper that, you know, like they're <laughs> Well it's a secret <laughs> because people don't really right. realize it. People today don't realize that and I don't, you know, I don't want to offend half of our readership by, you know, cluing them into the fact that today's actors suck. Um yeah, but uh you know, I mean, these guys were all classically trained. They were stage actors. They were, you know, they, they knew how to sing. They knew how to dance. They knew how to act. They they really knew what they were doing. There are very few guys less like that. I mean, people don't realize, but Christopher Walken is actually that way. Hence that, you know, Fat Boy Slim video from 10 years ago. It, <laughs> you know, he was classically trained in how to act on stage, how to sing, and how to dance. And, you know, I mean, he's known for it. That's not good. It's terrible. It's terrible stuff. But, you know, I mean, he's... You know, he he really is a fantastic actor outside of his little quirkiness. But people today aren't trained like that because in in today's movies, it's who looks good on film, not necessarily who's a good actor. Right. You know, that's why that's why there's such an influx of British actors into American television, American movies, because these guys are all brought up through the Royal Shakespeare Company. These guys know how to act. Right. You know, so that's why you're seeing this influx of British guys and British films because they all are quality actors. They're taught how to act from a very young age. It's not like, ooh, I want American Idol, and ooh, I had a number one hit because Americans are sheeple, and then ooh, they're going to put me in a movie now because I had a number one hit. Well, who cares if you had a number one hit? First of all, <laughs> your song sucked, and second of all, you can't sing anyway, hello, auto-tune, and now you can't act either. So you've already screwed up one entertainment medium. Can you stay out of the other, please? Well, here, and, and here's another thing to point out, too. I mean, if we are going to be talking about pro-American movies, I want to bring up, uh, you know, Tom Clancy movies. I mean, Jack Ryan <clears throat> as a character, I mean, that's pretty much a modern-day, you know, as pro-America as you can get. That's not ridiculous. Just some of yeah, the actors. Yeah, I mean, look, look, look at him. He, you know, he's got, uh, he's got a college degree. His father was a cop. He was a Marine. He became a he became rich in the stock market, and then he became a CIA analyst. He's about as American as apple pie. <laughs> right. Well, and, you know, he definitely, you know, loves his country and tries to, you know, do the right thing. And um, and I, I think we can all pretty much agree that the way Harrison portrayed, portrayed Jack Ryan in the two movies he did was pretty much how Jack Ryan should be. Yeah. Um, Alec Baldwin didn't do that bad of a job, but he was pretty much overshadowed by every other great actor in The Hunt for Red October. And, and there were many. Yes. And and while we do not deny that Morgan Freeman is a great actor, uh, Ben Affleck had no business playing Jack Ryan and, in the of all films. And, and, and really, he didn't have 
uh, he didn't have much to work with there because that script was bloody awful. I mean, I like I we any Jack Ryan or any Clancy uh, fan of the Clancy novels understands that if you're going to turn a Clancy novel into a movie, about eighty percent of it is going to get cut because it's just that they're that big and they're that intricate, and they usually have about five or six different plot lines going that usually merge down to two or three about two-thirds of the way through the book and then merge down to one about with like five chapters left. Right. It's just too much to be in a movie. Let me get that. So when you boil it down, please boil it down on a level that's comparable to the first three movies. But, I mean, they changed intricate plot lines of some of all fears. So it was just god-awful. Um, and I'm really hoping... They don't screw up the new Jack Ryan movie with Chris Pine as Jack Ryan. But the one thing that scared the crap out of me on IGN was it's, uh, they're, they're talking about how it's going to be an action movie and he's riding a motorcycle. I'm like, Jack Ryan's got a bad back. He's not getting on a motorcycle, okay? <laughs> well, it's Hollywood. They're going to screw it up. Now, I had a fan uh, ask me as we were talking about this upcoming theme show, that if I was going to throw any Michael Bay movies in there, like Armageddon or The Rock or Pearl Harbor. Actually, they were specifically talking about Pearl Harbor, and my response was, fuck no. <laughs> this is all you need to know about that abomination. That son of a bitch, Michael Bay, kicked me out of my barracks so he could film a stunt for that piece of crap movie. And then when I had to escort a bunch of World War II survivors onto the deck of the John C. Stennis for the grand premiere of that movie in the middle of Pearl Harbor, they were so embarrassed halfway through the friggin' movie because they fucked up the order of events that actually happened in Pearl Harbor that three elderly elderly guys looked at me and said, Petty Officer Smith, this sucks. Can we just go to the enlisted club and drink and tell sea stories? And I said, Roger that. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are a number of great war movies, and we mentioned a few. But at the end of the day, let's let's tell the story right. So yeah, if um, you want, folks, if you want if you want the true story of Pearl Harbor, go watch Tora Tora Tora. End right. of discussion. What's your question, Tatchett? I have a question for both of you guys. There's a classic, and I think this fits in the category. It's the movie They Live, because of not only the lines about you know. I've come here to chew bubble gum and kick gas, and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> oh, you guys sorry, remember what, what that? Was the, what was the movie again? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say it. They they live. We'll name the actors uh, in the movie uh, for our oh, audience. Oh, uh, Roddy Piper. He was a WWF dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, 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 well, I'm sorry, I'm trying to picture it. I, I know the line too because they no, call I, it for yeah, two, he, I, he reminds I, me of. Um, go ahead. Well, no, I definitely think it fits within being oh, yeah, pro-America. Yeah, yeah, the, the movie with uh, Billy Blanks where they had to um, – I think it was Billy – no, it wasn't Billy Blanks. Who was it? It was um, – hold on. It was well, – uh, You had to wear the sunglasses and the aliens. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah we got, wear the sunglasses, yeah. I, I, Brendan, i got to yeah. stop you there. We are – we're running about two minutes before the show, uh, and, oh, okay. and I do oh. want to do this one thing. Um, Touch it. Your all-time favorite pro-America movie? Oh crap! Um, shoot. You know what? Escape from New York. I have to say that. Nice, Brendan. What's yours? Uh, I'm gonna go with a John Wayne movie. I'm gonna go in harm's way. Okay, definitely good. I'm gonna be the campy, ridiculous one and just say Independence Day. I'm sorry. It, it is. Re- it's a. Re- it's a ridiculous re- movie. But by God, it is so pro-America that no. Fucking alien would ever dare think about invading Earth. Except that we are going to have Ender's Game at the end of the year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are winding down this show, and we will be back next week uh, talking about uh, – season finales and giving a review on some new shows that are coming out and then we are going to actually have a music movie theme show next Thursday Um, so stay tuned with us, keep being nerdy keep listening and checking out our online community for news and that's about it everybody have a great weekend say goodbye guys goodbye (laughs) All all right 
And don't forget, Star Trek, April 25th. We will be out at uh, North Park Mall in Dallas. Come watch the Next Generation event with us. And we are out of here.